friends of Mipway Lake answering a question of a subscriber who asked me if a Fender LT25 little guitar amp would be good as a bass practice amp. Uh, he asked, he said he's thinking about getting a rumble, uh, but he wanted to know could you at least practice your bass? He, he knows you're probably not going to perform through an LT25 uh, naturally uh, because, you know, unless, I don't know, you're playing a real quiet kind of band or something. But, uh, so I, I thought, well, you know, probably you can because the LT25 has a lot of, of pitch shift uh, effects or has a really good pitch shift effect. I've even done a video on how you can take a Strat type guitar, pitch shift it down and really sound almost like a bass. I mean, very, very satisfying sort of bass sound. So I got my P bass, it's a Squire. No, this is a J bass, my bad. <laughs> I got two, two, uh, two Squire basses, both of them are great. And I don't have a great microphone tonight that I'm using. I'm just using this. This is a uh, Zoom H1. So I don't know what the bass response is going to be. I don't know how to convey to you how it's going to sound. I can, I can play a little bit and I can show you what it sounds like. And I've got an LT25 over here and I've got my Ampeg, a bass amp over here. So I can show you kind of a comparison of, of what we're looking at. And so what I'm, I'm using here, um, I'm just going to turn around and show you. I'm not going to do a screen capture or not. On my Mac, I've got a Baseman sound that I'm using here, and I have put a compressor on it. And I've, right currently, I've got a flanger on it too, because I kind of like flanges on basses. I mean, I'm, I'm sort of, I kind of just kind of like that old sound, but I think that turned off on this now. No, I don't know. Well, let me let you hear it with the flanger on. It's kind of a kind of a low level flange. It's not. I've not got it, you know, really knocked it big time there. And the compression, I just like to hit a uh, bass. If I'm particularly going this kind of amp with some compression, I've got it set to about 10 o'clock uh, on the Fender compressor. And so I'm just going to turn this little, this little mic toward the amp and let you hear a little bit of how it sounds. So here we go. I'm pointing toward, I'm pointing toward the Fender amp, sort of at about a 30 degree angle. So, let's hear that same sort of thing with a, a uh, Ampeg. So naturally, my Ampeg is set up as a bass amp, bigger speaker, set up to operate, it's created to operate more into bass frequencies. So naturally, it's gonna have probably more satisfying type bass sound. <laughs> So, to answer your question, I think for a bass amp, it's going to handle the tones. I wouldn't crank it up real loud, uh, honestly, through through an LT25. Uh, I think certainly for practice, you could use the amp for both your guitar and for bass. And I think for recording, you could too. I think you could definitely EQ anything that you run through that little amp and you know, it's got great compression on it it's got uh, like i said great effects if you want to add a flange or a phaser or you want to do some sort of something crazy with your bass sound uh, you could even maybe even do a sub bass type type thing because you could shift the bass even lower and i didn't try that um uh, might be worth might be a worthy little thing to see could you go to really sub bass levels with it let's let's try that Okay, honestly, I don't think that works very well. <laughs> I'm using Octobot. I'm trying to use the Octobot here to see if I can go down to go down an octave. So now I have just the Octobot going into a basement amp. I don't think it works.
works very well. But yeah, so you can see even even crazy things like that could be done with this. I didn't try doing like the, the studio preamp. Let me try doing the studio preamp rather than the basement and see if that makes any difference just with, because uh, that should be really clean and, and unaffected. Where is our super clean? Okay. So this is just the super clean. I'm gonna go ahead and boost the bass up. I'm gonna take the treble down some, to keep the mids maybe a little bit high. Volume up, low gain. And so what have we got here? Pretty clean. Considering it's a small speaker, what is it, an eight-inch speaker in the uh, in the LT25? I think I've got a, a ten or twelve or something in my uh, Ampeg. <clears throat> so, for me personally, the uh, the sound, the the depth of in the room, how does it sound? It sounds better coming out. Naturally, it's going to come out of the bass amp. But would it work even for recording and definitely for practice? Yeah, the LT25 will handle it. It handles the low frequencies, I think, just fine. I would probably use the basement or the studio preamp. Uh, that's the settings that I had on the studio preamp for the sound samples that I was just doing. So hopefully that's answered the question. Uh, very versatile little amp, the LT25. Uh, is it, uh, one question I would, I would throw out there is, is it healthy for the, uh, amp to be to be working at bass frequencies rather than regular guitar frequencies. I, I, I can't imagine it would hurt the preamp at all. I do think if you crank the speaker way up there, I still would be suspect of it. So I'd keep it at sort of medium room type levels. Uh, I haven't pushed it very hard out here. It's uh, you know it's late night. I'm I'm up because I'm not sleeping well. <laughs> Nikki's in bed, so I haven't like really cranked it, but. I would think to just for the safety and health of your speaker, you wouldn't crank it super loud. Uh, but I think medium type levels be great for practice and uh, lots of versatility from an effect point of view if you're on a budget. I mean, can't think of anything cheaper that gives you more flexibility than that little LT25. And uh, of course, I love my new, uh, this is the Fender that I'm using now. This is the GTX 100, which has become just, just a fantastic fun amp for me to play with. And I'm still discovering all the different tones I can get out of that. It's pretty much limitless. So that's the big steps about a $500 amp. This amp is 150, 160 bucks, and it kills it for that, for that price. Um, just so you see, that is my Ampeg amp right there. That is, that is the one that, uh, for, yeah, I've got a rumble. Uh, since the guy had asked about rumbles, I've got a 65 watt one from gosh, maybe 15 years ago. I love that amp. It's big, it's kind of bulky. I only use it if I play out for bass and that's, that's been a long time since I've done that. I used to play in church a lot and I found that that Ampeg over here was perfect for that kind of situation. Even a big old church, it was plenty loud enough and it was more mobile. So that's sort of what I, I, I changed over to when I was playing bass a lot. The um, the Rumble is a killer good amp, and it really thumps. I think the one I have is only 65 watts, but it it really brings the bottom. It's really great if you're if you're wanting a good bass amp. So I would never discourage anybody from buying a Rumble or buying a, a dedicated bass amp like an Ampeg or or any some other type amp that that really handles bass well. But yeah, if you're on a budget, you want to record. 
uh, they want to make some great guitar demos, some great YouTube videos. The LT25 for 150 bucks, loaded with features. Sounds really great. Clearly handles bass pretty well. So you can do your bass and your guitars through it. Thanks for watching, folks. Peace to all who watch and subscribe to the channel if you like.